In this module, we are going to commence by learning pricing in imperfect factor market, that is bilateral monopoly. Bilateral monopoly is said to exist in the market at which single buyer firm or monopsonist firm interact with the labor union which acts as monopolist seller of the factor input labor. Since there exist two monopolists, one in demand side that is firm and other in supply side that is labor union, the market is said to have bilateral monopoly. It is rarely occurred in the real world but labor union of large manufacturing company in particular town or one company town or professional players union versus management can be approximated as bilateral monopoly situation. In this module, we first represent simple mathematical model of joint profit maximization of upstream monopolist and downstream monopsonist under bilateral monopoly situation and then analyze the indeterminacy problem of factor pricing. Further, we will also analyze the dynamic model to solve the indeterminacy problem in determination of the product of upstream seller firm. After studying this module, you shall be able to examine how factor price is determined when monopoly exists in both demand and supply side of the factor market, learn the derivations static model and indeterminacy of solution, know how to derive the dynamic model of price adjustment in bilateral monopoly. Let us begin by understanding the bilateral monopoly market. In bilateral monopoly market, there are four possible situations observed in the determination of equilibrium price and quantity. A. Seller may play dominant role in the market and force the buyer to accept the price offered by the seller. B. Single buyer or monopsonist can dominate the market and compel the sellers to accept the price and quantity offered by him. C. There may be collusion between buyer and seller, that is joint profit maximization, to determine the optimum price and quantity, and D, the indeterminacy of price and output or market failure due to the non-cooperation of buyer and seller. The bilateral monopoly model was developed to explain assorted labor markets operating in the early days of the U.S. Industrial Revolution, the late 1800s and early 1900s. During this period, large industrial activities, that is factories, mines, lumber operations, commonly created monopsony markets by dominating the labor market of a given community, so-called a company town. The expected monopsony outcome, especially low wages, inevitably resulted. The workers sought to counter these less than desirable situations by forming labor unions. The expressed goal of most unions was to monopolize the selling side of a labor market and balance the monopsony power of the employer. This resulted in a bilateral monopoly. A number of modern consumption purchases, such as buying a house or a car, tend to fit the bilateral monopoly model. These purchases often include a single buyer and a single seller. As the bilateral model suggests, one-on-one -on -one negotiation over the price is a common feature of such purchases. Perhaps, the factor markets that come closest to the bilateral monopoly model are those involving the labor services of professional athletes. The National Football League, Major League Baseball and National Basketball Association come very close to being monopsony buyers of athlete labor services. 
players in each league are also represented by a players union including the national football league players association major league baseball players association and national basketball players association while the wage rates tend to be significantly higher for the athletes than for the factory workers the underlying process is much the same bilateral monopoly relations are an important feature of several industries the most obvious example is probably that of a firm with a unionized labor force where wages are determined in bargaining between the firm and its trade union when analyzing the location choices of downstream firms in this type of industry structure we make the important assumption that production technologies are independent of locations in the downstream market this essentially means that for a given technology which locks a downstream firm into a bilateral monopoly relation with an upstream input supplier each downstream firm has a feasible strategy space in terms of location implying that the same input can be used at different locations if location is interpreted in geographical space for example the linear city the reasonableness of this assumption should be obvious and even if we think of location as horizontal product differentiation it would be reasonable to assume that a given technology facilitates a possible large scope for differentiation this assumption should be especially viable in the context of labor input with a certain degree of general skills bilateral monopoly does not achieve an efficient allocation of resources like that found with perfect competition interestingly though it can achieve a more efficient allocation than that of either a monopsony buyer by itself or a monopoly seller by itself while monopsony and monopoly acting alone tend to be extremely inefficient when combined efficiency often improves this outcome suggests that two wrongs do make a right the reason is that the market control of the monopsony buyer is countered by the market control of the monopoly seller this by the way is how a competitive market achieves efficiency the key is that perfect competition has a large number of competitors on both sides rather than only one this process of balancing market control is at the root of bilateral monopoly now coming on to the mathematical model of bilateral monopolist suppose the seller upstream monopolist produces intermediate product and sells it to the downstream monopsonist buyer who employs it as an input to produce output y the unit prices of the products x and y are m and p respectively the profits of seller that is pi s and buyer that is pi b are given as pi s is equals to m into x minus c bracket x bracket close and pi b is equals to p into f bracket x bracket close minus m into x where c bracket x bracket close shows the seller's cost function and f bracket x bracket close represents buyer's production function in order to determine price and quantity in the bilateral monopoly situation we assume that seller purchases input in the perfectly competitive market and buyer firm also sells the product in the perfectly competitive market we examine now the first two cases of bilateral monopoly in which either seller act as a dominant role or buyer firm becomes dominant to determine the price when seller firm is price setter the price will be determined from the profit maximization process 
under pure monopoly of upstream seller firm. Similarly, if monopsonist buyer firm dominates, the price it obtains from its profit maximization will be market equilibrium price. But if no party dominates in the market and fails to recognize their interdependency in the determination of equilibrium price, the market mechanism breaks down and indeterminacy problem will arise. That is, result of conventional bilateral monopoly theory. In order to avoid the indeterminacy in pricing decision, Henderson and Quant suggest the collusion between two parties and that can be accomplished through joint profit maximization and mutual bargaining for desirable price. The joint profit maximization takes place in the following way. Pi is equals to Pi B plus Pi S which is equals to P into F bracket X bracket close minus M into X plus M into X minus C bracket X bracket close which is equals to P into F bracket X bracket close minus C bracket X bracket close. The first order condition for joint profit maximization implies that delta pi by delta x is equals to p into f dash x minus c dash x is equals to 0. Now the joint profit maximization provides the optimal output x star not the optimal price. The optimal price can be determined through the mutual bargaining between the buyer and the seller. Henderson and Quant in their model find that there is no unique price is obtained. Instead, there are upper and lower limits of the price. This is shown as Cx star divided by x star is less than equals to m which is less than equals to p into fx star divided by x star. In the static model, there does not exist any negotiated price and indeterminacy problem arises. In the dynamic model, we can analyze how the bargaining process happens between the upstream seller firm and downstream buyer firm. Devadas 1998 suggests a dynamic model which captures the process of bargaining price negotiation and solves the indeterminacy problem. Devadas assumes that each player or firm in the market has some knowledge about the nominal profit of the other player. When buyer firm's profit is higher than the seller firm's profit, that is, pi b is greater than pi s, the seller wants to enter into the bargaining process to get higher price for his output x for raising its profit. Similarly, when pi s is greater than pi b, the monopsonist buyer firm wants to participate in bargaining to set a lower price so that it can increase its profit. Thus, in this model, there will be downward adjustment of price M when pi S is greater than pi B and upward adjustment of M will take place when pi B is greater than pi S. When pi b is equals to pi s, there will be no adjustment in price m and the equilibrium price m star will be determined. According to Devados, this dynamic adjustment process can be captured by the following equation. Delta m by delta t is equals to m dash t is equals to gamma pi b minus pi s where gamma is greater than 0 where gamma measures the speed of the price adjustment or effectiveness of bargaining when price M approaches towards the equilibrium price M star. If the bargaining process is not taken place, the profit obtained by each party will be zero. Therefore, it would be rational for each party to enter into the bargaining process. Hence, by substituting equation pi s is equals to m into x minus cx 
and pi b is equals to p into fx minus mx in equation delta m by delta t is equals to m dash t is equals to gamma into pi b minus pi s we obtain delta m by delta t is equals to m dash t is equals to gamma into bracket p into fx minus m into x bracket minus bracket m into x minus cx bracket close delta m by delta t is equals to m dash t is equals to gamma into bracket p into fx minus 2 into m into x plus cx bracket close now by m dash t is equals to 0 we can obtain the equilibrium price as m star is equals to p into fx plus cx divided by 2 into x the equilibrium price thus obtained as half of per unit revenue of buyer in addition with half of per unit cost of seller the equilibrium price m star lies in the midpoint of the upper and lower bounds given in equation c x star divided by x star which is less than equals to m which is less than equals to p into fx star divided by x star at the equilibrium price profit of the buyer equals to the profit of the seller and that is given as pi b is equals to pi s is equals to half of p into fx minus cx thus at equilibrium either partly obtains the half of the joint profit or monopoly profit this implies that buyer and seller have equal bargaining power the stability of the equilibrium price can be examined through phase diagram this is shown in the given figure the phase diagram is negatively sloped as delta m dash t divided by delta m is less than zero for points above the horizontal axis the price m increases over time as m dash t is greater than zero by contrast for any point below m dash t less than zero the price m will decrease over time the arrowheads of the phase diagram shown in both upper and lower planes of the horizontal axis indicate that the phase line converges to the equilibrium price m star by solving the first order differential equation delta m by delta t is equals to m dash t is equals to gamma into p into fx minus 2 into m into x plus cx we get the quantitative solution of dynamic stability the solution of equation delta m by delta t is equals to m dash t is equals to gamma into p into fx minus 2 into m into x plus cx is obtained as m t is equals to bracket m 0 minus p into fx plus cx divided by 2x bracket close into e to the power minus 2 into gamma into x into t plus p into fx plus cx divided by 2x mt is equals to bracket m0 minus m star bracket close into e to the power 2 into gamma into x into t plus m star here m0 is initial price as gamma and x are positive e to the power of minus 2 into gamma into x into t approaches to 0 with the increase in time t and mt tends to the equilibrium price m star the parameter gamma measures the effectiveness of the bargaining or speed of price adjustment 
for greater value of gamma the price will be dynamically adjusted at faster rate the speed of price adjustment also depends on the magnitude of the upstream seller's product x the larger the quantity of x the faster the equilibrium price approaches to m star the model can also be applied in the factor market by incorporating supplier of factor in place of upstream firm for example if we replace upstream firm by labor union then its interaction with the downstream monopsonist buyer firm depicts the bilateral monopoly situation and we can obtain the indeterminacy of wage in the static model and stable equilibrium wage in dynamic model only the conventional result of wage indeterminacy under bilateral monopoly is analyzed graphically later our next topic is indeterminacy of wages and employment in bilateral monopoly situation wage rate is set through the bargaining process of both the demand side and supply side monopolist agent in the factor market and equilibrium wage rate lies between upper and lower limits determined within this model that is we won't get single equilibrium wage rate in given figure the monopsonist firm's demand curve is df this demand curve is mrpl of factor input for labor union this demand curve df represents the average revenue curve that is df is equals to aru since labor union act as a monopolist for obtaining equilibrium we will derive marginal revenue curve mru by using graphical technique in figure mru curve is shown below the df or aru curve the sl curve represents the supply curve of labor faced by the monopsonist firm this curve shows average expenditure or average cost of labor to the monopsonist firm now we draw corresponding marginal expenditure that is mef curve the sl curve also reflects the marginal cost of supplying labor to the monopolist labor union although we know that monopolist does not have supply curve here we can assume that the monopolist labor union behaves as if he were a perfectly competitive seller having considered the above cost revenue structure we can derive the equilibrium position of each monopolist agent in this model the monopsonist firm maximizes its profit at point f where its marginal expense of labor that is mef equals to the marginal revenue product of labor that is mrpl thus monopsonist wants to hire lf units of labor at wage rate equal to wf on the other hand the monopolist labor union maximizes his gain at point u thus we obtain the upper limit of wage rate set by the labor union and lower limit of the wage rate fixed by the monopsonist firm the upper limit wage rate wu can be realized if and only if the monopsonist firm acts as a perfectly competitive firm similarly if labor union does not exert monopoly power and behaves as a perfectly competitive seller the lower limit wage rate wf can be realized thus none of these monopolists can reach their wage and employment target and make the solutions of the bilateral monopoly market indeterminate hence in this market the wage is settled through the bargaining process of these two monopoly agent since only upper and lower limit of wage rates are determined in this market the settlement of wage towards either of the upper and lower limits depends on the bargaining skill power of the participants for instance if the government is pro labor or there is a strong political support behind labor union the bargaining power of union will be relatively stronger than the firm lobby the wage will be set close to the upper limit of the wage rate in contrast if state shows capitalist attitude 
firm lobby will be more powerful in the bargaining process than union and wage rate will be mutually settled close to the lower limit. Now, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Bilateral monopoly refers to the market situation in which single seller interacts with the single buyer. It arises in the factor market when there exists a single seller that is monopolist labor union and a single buyer that is monopsonist firm. In static model, there is an indeterminacy problem in the market solutions, wage and employment. That is, no unique equilibrium wage and employment combination can be found in this market. In the dynamic model, the equilibrium price can be determined through the negotiation. In the bilateral monopoly situation, only upper and lower limit of wage or employment can be determined. These are outcomes of the two monopolist profit maximizing behavior. The settlement of wage and employment depends on the bargaining power of each participant.